What action needs to be taken to protect our climate? How can we better inform everyday citizens? And how can we ensure that government policies and the information that's available about our climate and about our world more broadly um, leads us in a positive direction? Welcome to Impact with AI. I'm Brandon Andrews, your host. Excited to engage with another entrepreneur using artificial intelligence and machine learning technology to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, today, I'm joined by the CEO of Climind. We're going to talk about SDG 13 and how her platform is supporting this SDG. Uh, welcome to Impact with AI. To begin with, tell us, how are you and Climind making an impact? Thank you so much for having me. Um, so Climind is uh, our baby for two years old. Uh, it's a large entry model. Uh, it's an AI co-worker uh, for people doing climate business. Uh, so we specifically build different agents for uh, people whose day-to-day -day work uh, is to do mitigation adaptation or contributing to this. Uh, an example will be insurance sector. Uh, so they use our AI software to um, like uh, to to do information retrieval and uh, like to help them find the information data set to construct the climate in, uh, related insurance. Um, and then the team is uh, located uh, kind of everywhere uh, in mainland China, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, and the more uh, coming up. Uh, so I'm uh, great to be here and then uh, share more details of what we do. Um, but uh, I'm sure like we're the one of the first, uh, I think, from Asia, like really making this happen, like bringing large range model into the climate sector. Yeah, this is incredible. And a lot of people at this point have heard about large language models. Of course, people are familiar with uh, ChatGPT and Anthropic and Gronk and some of the other um, platforms. How did you identify a gap in the market? Why did you think people that are working on climate, people that are working in this area need an LLM specifically to help them move uh, their agenda forward? I, I want to start from what is the agenda. Um, so we our economy is transition to green. Uh, or under with the transition to green. Um, and the problem is the how. Um, and then under the how, there's like long list of uh, challenges like uh, capital, technology, supply, um, uh -huh. and uh, supply of talent, et cetera. Um, so what we, uh, I mean, you're absolutely right. Like there are so many foundation models, um, pretty much free options as well, like you can use. And then GPT is nothing new anymore. Uh, just after a couple of uh, short years. Um, uh -huh. However, if you go to the professional sector, um, the like GPT is is not enough. Um, and then in our day to day work, I think uh, um, in a way it's more used with the entertainment purpose, or at least uh -huh. like for entertainment purpose, it's easier to adopt. Like, um, but we believe like the power, the impact of uh, AI large language model is beyond being a chatbot. Um, and then what we are bringing to the table um, is the entire climate sector, the climate science sector has been developed so slow. Like imagine it takes a four or five years to uh, get an IPCC report um, and uh, how you design the policy. If the report itself gets like five years to write. Um, right. So uh, we provide, we tailor the platform like a specific for different tasks. Um, behind the scenes, very complex work, like from data to algorithm to building different agents. Um, um, but the, to put it simple, we we are reshaping um, how tasks, how challenges being done uh, in the knowledge worker uh, sector in climate. Wow. Okay. And I think you're absolutely right. Conversational AI or chatbots is just one. It's a way that a lot of people have been introduced to artificial intelligence, but it's just one way to use AI. And I think it's great to see um, that you've identified a way to support people that are moving uh, us forward when it comes to transforming the economy, as you said. So now let's talk about uh, climate action, which is United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 13. How do you see this goal and how are you supporting it? Um, so uh, very, I think it's a great timing. We're actually um, in the process of 
developing a uh, search engine or, uh, for United Nations office. So soon, uh, like on the website, you will see uh, the website that has or a separate link will provide the access of a climate algorithm to uh, document uh, to all over the world. Uh, and I personally, I am part of the 17 SDG on leader uh, recognized by UN. So this is like a two year long appointment program. Uh, every uh -huh. year they will get 17 and this year they received more than 33,000 applications, I believe. Um, so wow. I think from my uh, experience, like either uh, representing the UN to speak at the conference or through building the solution ourselves, um, action matters more uh, than advocacy, I would say. Uh, yeah. In the end, like we, um, even we have empathy, it's hard to imagine to put yourself in the shoulder of other per other person. Uh, like imagine if someone living in a country, like facing the country might be disappearing uh, in a couple of years. Uh, and then um, I think that's a real impact of climate with a scale and distance of time, uh, hard to, uh, hard to get the same feeling. Uh, so I think for, for me, myself, it's uh, trying to, uh, well, I, I hope to enable uh, to empower uh, people who actually can do more mitigation adaptation in the sector. And then what I am good at, um, our specialty very naturally um, comes to, um, to build something like to increase the efficiency of the knowledge worker. Um, so that's a bit, uh, I think, how would I approach this? I love what you just said, building the efficiency, the efficacy of knowledge workers. And you're absolutely right. It's one thing to have these goals as positive and as laudable and as great as these goals are, it's one thing to have them. It's another thing to actually build the infrastructure, to build the tools, um, to build the necessary resources to be able to actually reach the goals. So um, incredible work supporting climate action and congrats on your uh, UN appointment as a young leader. And also we're all looking forward to being able to go on the UN website and use the search engine once it's launched. So please keep us posted on uh, when it'll be available. Um, next, um, you've built this LLM. Um, is there anything different um, or anything unique about your approach to AI that would be different from building an LLM for more general use or more general audience? Um, every application uh, walks a different path, um, but more or less like a weird application layer is based on top of a foundation model. So uh, I think we start from figuring out what's the use case rather than what is the right model. Um, and I, I think the scenario use case is more important than data. Data is more important than model uh, for our case. Uh, uh -huh. The foundation model we can use anyone's uh, depending on the use case and then the format of the information, the data. Um, and then for scenario, it's very tricky um, because uh, we don't have things we can learn from. Uh, uh -huh. It's absolutely new. Like uh, one example is how we build a a pipeline, a data pipeline and a workflow to uh, develop this agent can help with, um, uh, for example, like, um, for example, like uh, information retrieval for a rating company uh, rather mm -hmm. than ESG. Uh, so this is something that you really need to understand what is going on uh, with uh, uh, in the industry. Uh, so we spend a lot of time to talk to users and then client and then like, um, upstream, downstream, like trying to make sure we are, uh, we are doing the correct thing, uh, and then, uh, and then there, there's so much more we haven't explored yet. Um, just uh, uh, makes the list like how many jobs being impacted by AI climate. Uh, so I'm excited, like uh, how many more agents we can build in the future, and then making uh, climate as a platform uh, where everyone can find a solution. That's tough. And that makes complete sense that um, you have a much more narrow profile. And I've actually been working on building a model myself to do some scoring and, and, and some other things. And when you're doing something that's very new and you don't have a huge corpus of data to be able to feed into the model for training, it does make it a lot more difficult. So kudos to you and your team for being able to work through that um, technological hurdle 
uh, to be able to get something that works and that is, of course, continuing to improve over time. So here's the last question, and this is a really big one. Um, you know, because of your association with the UN, um, how important the sustainable development goals are. The reality is many of the goals are behind. Do you think artificial intelligence can supercharge the goals, as the U.N. Secretary General has said, and maybe get them on track uh, to be reached by 2030? Um, the, I think my honest answer, honest answer is it's very hard to achieve all the goals by 2030, uh, given the current speed and then the dynamic of the geopolitics right now. Um, uh -huh. I pretty much go to even have quarter like three, four times a year in the past two years. And then, like hearing the uh, conversations, the meetings, um, it's not good. But uh, one, I think another another fact I want to bring is AI is not part of the SDG goal. Uh, it's not part of the 17 SDG goal. That's why like you actually develop this uh, AI advisory body. Uh, right. And then like a list of uh, initiatives to uh, bring the conversation of AI within UN organization. Um, for sure, it can accelerate, but even as an entity, uh, well, I, I think, uh, I mean, they, their work like AI should do, but more important is it's the advocacy, it's the leadership, like to tell the world uh, where's the direction we should have to. Um, I think the effort really, the implementation part really need to happen uh, in the private sector, public, other public sector. Uh, so, uh, well, I hope like uh, we can still align ago. Uh, I think it's not about uh, how many achievements, like how many targets we can do. Uh, even we hit all the targets, like we changing the, we updating uh, our goals, I believe. Uh, so I think that the, uh -huh. what matters most for now happening is um, uh, are we heading to the right direction? Um, and then that's something that I truly worry about. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And uh, you're absolutely right. Um, are we moving forward? Are we making progress? Can we look back at the goal period and say, maybe we didn't reach everything, but uh, we were able to make some significant progress uh, between the start and finish? Well, really appreciate your time today. Thank you again uh, to you and your team for the incredible work that you're doing. Um, as we close out, Tell us, how can people uh, access Climind? How can they learn more about what you're building and uh, support the work that you're doing? Thank you. Um, just send us the message on LinkedIn or uh, email. Uh, so my email is uh, Karen at uh, climind.co. Uh, so we keep looking for talents and also users that use scenarios. Uh, and I believe like uh, no matter what kind of hats you have, if you're interested in climate AI, uh, talk to us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for joining us today. And thanks to you and the audience for joining another episode of Impact with AI. I'm the host, Brandon Andrews. If you're interested in seeing more of these conversations, visit impactwithai.media. And of course, like and subscribe on our YouTube page so you see more of our content. I'll see you next time.